are, we are a mixture of project managers, of facilitators, of investors, okay, and R&D R &D engineers, okay, with a mixture of all these all together, okay, okay to become a big player without to have a huge structure because we share the structure of all the cluster members, okay. This is a big idea, okay, to compete and to really achieve that ideas and projects of many entrepreneurs around the world who have a pathway to go to the market in this so difficult market that is the automotive sector. Right. Okay? So, so you're not you're not just involved in electric vehicle development. That's actually just a part of a larger business strategy that involves creating sus more sustainable urban communities. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, Partly, basically, there are many facets, as David explained, to the Chimera business model, and electric vehicles is just one part right. of uh, right. one facet. Uh, the whole idea is to evolve or contribute towards the sustainable solutions or implementation of uh, sustainable solutions in urban areas for a start, and maybe in the future we want to grow out to sustainable solutions in general. Right. Okay. So, in essence, Kumara Project is really a, um, maybe for want of a better term, a blanket organization that has many, uh, com many different companies uh, involved in it. Some with expertise in automotive engineering, battery technology. Others maybe architecture, uh, commercial, uh, civil engineering. Uh, bringing all those different yeah. pieces together to to explore and develop and, and and fund various types of future solutions for the cities of tomorrow, if you will. Yeah, yeah you're you you totally right. right yeah. And we would like to term ourselves as a knowledge broker sitting in the center and uh, leading or facilitating this cooperation model wherein we have all the entities, we bring together all the entities in place that, that are necessary to develop such there projects, two projects on our uh, R&D yeah, deploy. One is the electro-solar motorbike. Okay. It's not the bicycle uh, motorbike as in uh, a scooter or a, uh, a motor, motorized vehicle. So uh, it, has an, uh, it has a power rating of 18 kilowatts, which translates to something like 24 horsepowers. Okay. In, Current uh, market situations, uh, such high power uh, motorbike is it, it's a lot for for a, a sco so, scooter, electric scooter. Right. Current things are around uh, six to eight kilowatts for uh, the entire market. So yeah. it's much much higher than what currently exists. And the idea is to produce the state of the art with the existing technology. And in the future, when we are ready to scale up our uh, operations uh, for commercialization which is not our motive, but if we find a particular company who's aligned to do so and take this platform, we would like to deploy it in a scaled down version for the street, uh, valid for the street, enough power for uh, riding it on the streets. Oh, that okay. is All right. The second one is the electric GT car, which we are developing. So uh, if you see the world of motorsport racing, there are two typical formats. One is the open wheel, which is Formula One the open wheel version and one is the GT version which is our regular cars but running on racetracks like in the US you have NASCAR and other such formats. So this is something like a NASCAR model. Okay. Not open wheel. Uh, our plans are to develop, uh, I mean we have already developed this currently and the idea is to test other technologies that may be suitable for uh, in the field of sustainability and uh, green racing in this uh, car. So that is the part about living labs that you'll also find in the, right. the press kit. Well, that, so, okay. these are so, so what you have is in sense a virtual um, consortium of companies from various parts of the world and those companies then contribute whatever expertise they have to a particular project. In this case, one being the solar bike, the solar motorbike, and the other being the GT racer. Now, of course, the question becomes is how do you coordinate 
that. In other words, you know, generally you're going to have a little skunk work somewhere where you've got a group of dedicated engineers who are working out of one location and doing all this engineering, prototyping, uh, welding, all the things that are necessary. How, you know, where is that work being done on, on these projects? Okay, so uh, on the first part, if I were you, I would more so call it a consortium instead of a virtual consortium. It is an active consortium. Okay. Uh, it's no way virtual. And uh, we have a membership agreement, a non-disclosure agreement and all the paperwork in place to, 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 uh, to uh, legitimize the, uh, the existence of this consortium. This is a holding company that is going to be a, uh, to manage the distribution of different technologies uh, with these financial solutions, okay, and it's going to be a business for us uh, as a holding company created for this purpose, okay, and this is one of the examples, but there's many examples in the many fields we are we are working on. Okay, and so uh, let's let's take this if I understand correctly now. So, um, Modec uh, has vehicles that they have leased to various companies from FedEx, UPS, Tesco, um, but all of those companies have essentially paid cash for those vehicles. Yeah. Uh, what you're proposing to do is to create a holding company that in, in a sense is a leasing company that will, that will then allow corporations in Germany, France, Netherlands, whatever, to rather than buy the vehicles outright, they will come to you on a, uh, a more risk-free basis and then lease the vehicles from you for some specific lease of term. rent in, in europe we say rent because right. the difference from renting and leasing is renting the the vehicle is owned by the financial institution not by the customer in leasing the vehicle is owned by the by the customer it, 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 it seems something not very important but it's very important because the risk is on the financial institution or is on, on, the, on the customer Okay, if something wrong happens with the vehicle, um, the owner is the, or the customer or the financial institution. The financial institution is better for you because you 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 leave the vehicle to the financial institution. Okay, you have here. Give me another one. Okay, right. that's a, that's the benefit of renting. Okay, okay. Uh, leasing is another financial option, but uh, the best for the companies that what they are using normally is renting. Okay, but the main idea is you have to explain. Yeah, yeah, that's the main idea. In a nutshell, what Kumara Project is, is the hub of a spoke of various enterprises that then, if there's a project out here that needs a particular solution, you can, at the hub, because of all of your networks, be able to say, we've got a potential solution over here, let's bring that solution to apply it to your problem over here. So you're in essence sort of a network hub coordinating the movement of intellectual property back and forth through the system. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. That is one of the, that, that is what the cluster management part does. Uh, what right. Explain the three pillars. So the idea of cluster management is to do just that. Right. What you just mentioned. Okay. And uh, until now, however, uh, how, how you have illustrated or your, your understanding, it's perfect about what Chimera project is, I would say. Uh, and the only uh, part is like on the back of it, it's a group of investor entrepreneur background people who are our steering committee members and the investors okay. who are uh, funding our R&D projects. But okay. plus management is primarily uh, we go out and connect, make right. those connections and be the hub and spoke. Okay, so, so where do our ideas originate? In other words, let's say I have an idea. I have a, a system to create energy using hydrokinetic power from a flowing river, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, we do have that, but I'm just using yes. that as an example. So do, do ideas come sort of like a VC firm, come from the outside, people approach you, or do your ideas originate within your steering committee or within your group of people at, there at the cluster management level? Where do the ideas come? How do they get vetted? Okay, so for the two R&D projects that we already have, 
we are very closely bound with some of our cluster members. The relationship is really tight. And in that case, we look at a certain competency. The competency in this case was uh, motor racing, one. The competency uh, was very similar, having automotive sector, their, their hands in, in development of automobiles in general, be it two wheelers or four wheelers. So that the competency existed. The will to uh, create something uh, of a value uh, was there. And then just connecting the dots, what we tried to do was have a two-wheeler uh, electro-solar motorbike, which is not a very radical idea per se. Uh, it, it's not super creative. I mean, uh, everybody must have thought about it. Uh, but we just went ahead and did it because we had the competency in place right. and the funding in place. And so is the case of electric GT uh, car. I, I'm sure if uh, Daimler had, had the intentions to, of doing this, they could have developed one, but uh, I do not know why they didn't do it. Maybe their motives are different. Right. Our right. are different. Okay. But uh, on the base of it, if, if, if there's a direct competency alignment with one of our cluster members, we'll jump into the opportunity, do the uh, due diligence analysis and the finances around it. That's, that's the part of us over here. And then move on with the project. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Uh, well, the, thank you. This has been fun. I, this is the first time I've done uh, a Skype interview. I'm hoping I had the recorder running, so I'm hoping that uh, we got part of it and I can, you, you know, use it to, uh, to good effect. So thank you, uh, the three of you, for doing this. And let's stay in touch. I want to you know, keep me up, uh, abreast of uh, how things go. Okay. Thank, Thank you for your time, Bill. And I'm sure it's been recording because I see a red dot on the corner of our screen. Yep. That's been ah, yeah. Yes, it's so true. don't worry, it will be on. And I mean, this is fun, indeed, yeah. for us as well. Yep. It's, uh, Absolutely. Like, okay, well, great. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. And, Muchas uh, gracias. Hasta mañana. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay. okay, Bill. Thank Bye. you very much for your time. You betcha. Bye. 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 Bye.